Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. We are in the kitchen today doing some postpartum prep freezer meals and a little bit of prep for this weekend. So the first thing I'm gonna do is preheat the oven to 400 degrees. We are gonna be making a ton of biscuits that I can make, throw in the freezer, pop them directly in the oven from frozen and they come out beautifully, absolutely beautifully. We're gonna make a bunch of pie crust for prep for the holidays, for Thanksgiving, Christmas, and for some easy quiches and things like that postpartum. It's just so nice if you already have crust made. I'm just going to take what the grocery store does for me. If I go buy crust, instead of going and buying pre-made, I'm gonna go ahead and make a bunch of them today, and then I can make my own convenience foods. We're also gonna make a bunch of pizza crust, because pizza dough freezes beautifully, pull it out, let it thaw, and you can make homemade pizza really easily that way. Before we got started today, I did go grocery shopping downstairs in the freezers. I got a bunch of Italian and breakfast sausage. We're gonna pre-cook a bunch of this for easy pre-cooked sausage and also bacon in the freezer. I love having pre-cooked sausage and bacon in the freezer. We can make these into quiches. We can use them for our pizza. We can use them for making pasta sauces. And you don't have to go through the effort of thawing your meat and cooking it, because I bought this meat from a whole hog last fall. So my meat is almost always frozen. So it's so nice to have pre-cooked meat in the freezer because it, it thaws out very, very quickly. I also got out a bunch of butter for the biscuits and the pie crust. I have two of these blue Hubbards and then I have one of these we grew together. And quite honestly, I have no idea what this one is. I'm going to get all three of these cut. This one's a lot easier to cut. I'm gonna de-seed them. We're gonna get them in our roaster pan and into the oven. And the chickens are going to greatly enjoy the guts of these squashes. I actually really like these type of squash better than the Cinderella type of pumpkin because they tend to not be so watery. We are going to be using the squash to make pumpkin ravioli this weekend and some pumpkin pies for Thanksgiving. I like to cook my winter squash cut side up so that it can kind of evaporate as it cooks. I love the texture of this squash because the flesh is so dense and beautiful. This is really nice too, but it's definitely a lot softer and there's gonna be a lot more moisture in this squash as opposed to this one. We don't quite have enough space in our roaster for all three of those squash. So we're gonna get these two in this oven. And then I'm gonna grab out another dish and we'll get this one cooking in another oven. I just turned this oven on but I'm not worried about it not being preheated. It can preheat with the pumpkins in there. So let's get going on the next thing. So for the biscuits, I think that's what we're gonna do next. I have some milk here. Well, it's half milk, half cream. The recipe calls for half and half. If you're not from the United States, half and half is what most typical Americans put in their coffee. And it's half milk, half cream. But I ran out of that, so I just made it by putting in milk and cream. And then we need to sour this and it needs to sit for a minute. So I have just vinegar. We're gonna quadruple this recipe. So I have a total of four cups of milk here and we need to put a fourth of a cup of vinegar in here. So it's one tablespoon per recipe. You can substitute buttermilk for this recipe, but I never have buttermilk in my house. So that's why I just kind of make my own and we're gonna mix that and let that sit for a minute. And we can measure out all of our dry ingredients while that sits. I did go ahead and just get out my big thing of flour because we are gonna be making a lot of things with flour today. So instead of me having to refill the one in here multiple times, we're just gonna go ahead and use this. The nice thing about all these recipes is we can just keep reusing our bowls because they have a lot of the same ingredients in them. So to quadruple this recipe, we need eight cups 
of all-purpose flour. I buy my dry goods in bulk, so I can link where I get them. This is also a two cup measure, so I'm gonna put four of these into this bowl. I love this two cup measure. It was a gift in my P.O. box, and I can link it down below if you're interested. I find it super, super handy. So we are gonna put our flour in here. Then we're gonna add four teaspoons of salt, so four big pinches. Now we're gonna add eight teaspoons of baking powder, and then we're gonna add one full teaspoon of baking soda. The last ingredient before we add our acidic milk is we're gonna add two cups of butter. And this is, this butter was frozen. That's why I had it sit out on the counter for just a little bit. I do want this butter really cold, but it does not need to be completely frozen. I am gonna cut it up a little bit just to make it a little bit easier to break up in our flour mixture. And I did take some time to go ahead and write down my quadrupled recipes on my piece of paper here where I have my recipes written down just so that I wouldn't get caught up and in the middle of trying to quadruple every single ingredient. I wouldn't mess up on my math because I have been known to do that before. And I would rather not mess up on something when I'm working with this big of a batch. So let me mix all these dry ingredients together just so that they are nice and combined before we start mixing in our, flat, our butter. And then I already realized that we don't actually need one cup of milk per recipe. It's three fourths of a cup of milk per recipe. So I'm glad that I took the time to go ahead and double check my recipe and write down all my quadrupled amounts so that we don't, my oven's preheated, we don't mess up on this really big batch of biscuits. You could do this in the food processor, but I like just doing it in the bowl. I'm gonna take a pastry knife and I'm gonna take just a few minutes to cut this butter into this flour mixture. I love taking time like this to make big batches. It doesn't take hardly any extra time to quadruple a biscuit recipe as opposed to making one recipe. So that's why I'm gonna go ahead and do that today. And I did want to recipe test this to make sure that these biscuits will cook up really nicely from frozen, and they do. If you watch that video where we cooked them up, I was amazed how beautifully they cooked up just straight from the freezer, right into a 425 degree oven for about 12 minutes, and they were perfect. So it's just really nice to have your own homemade things so you can control the ingredients if you want, and you can have that convenience. Even if you weren't taking, you know, like an afternoon to set aside like I am today to do this, next time you make biscuits, double your recipe. You already have all the ingredients out. You already are making a mess in the kitchen. It doesn't take much more time to measure out twice as much ingredients and then pop half of them in the freezer and then you have biscuits anytime you want. So this is about perfect. We want some pieces of butter in there. Let's see if I can show you. So there's some bigger chunks, there's some smaller chunks and that's about the texture we want right there. So now what we're gonna do is make a little bit of a well in the center of our butter mixture. And I'm gonna put a piece of parchment paper down because I don't feel like scrubbing my counter. And now we're gonna add our milk, which we need three cups. And sometimes I do need a little bit more. Can you see how this is kind of thickened up a little bit? It's almost turned into like a cheese from the vinegar. And that's what's gonna help these biscuits rise. So it's okay that I made a little too much because we may need it. That's the thing about making biscuits and anything with dough, is you never know exactly how much of the wet ingredients versus the dry ingredients you're gonna need. So we're gonna mix this together. So the top part of this is nice and moist. I can shape it into kind of a ball, but the bottom part is still a little crumbly. So what I like to do is either dump the top part that's moist enough out on the parchment or push it out on the side and take the drier part and put that to one side. And we're gonna add just a little bit of moisture just to the dry side. You wanna add as little moisture to the overall thing as you can. We're almost there. So we're gonna test it by pulling out some and putting it into a ball. 
That's perfect. As soon as we get these biscuits rolled out, we're gonna get a couple things cooking on the stove before we start our next recipe so that we can make sure our kitchen is working as efficiently for us as possible. So I'm gonna get all of this biscuit dough onto this parchment. And if I need to add a little bit more moisture to the bottom crumbs of this, we certainly can. But this next step that I'm gonna show you here, this is what the key to this recipe to making these biscuits extremely, extremely flaky is. And I can tell this is a little bit dry. So I am gonna add just a little bit more of our milk mixture to this. This is where just cooking and experience, the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll be. A lot of times, even, even in baking, you know, you have these hard and fast rules that you need to follow everything to the T, but the more you do it, the more you'll realize that a lot of it comes down to the texture, what it looks like on that day. <laughs> do you need a little bit more moisture? Do you need a little bit more flour? And you'll just kind of learn that the more you cook. The more comfortable you get in the kitchen, the more you'll enjoy it, because you won't feel like you're, you know, questioning every decision you make. That's a lot better. That's definitely more of the texture we want. To make this a little easier on myself, I'm gonna cut this in half. I've never worked with this much biscuit dough before. So I'm not kneading this, I'm just taking my dough and pushing it together until we get a nice cohesive ball and we pick up all this extra goodies that are on this parchment. Okay, so now I have my biscuit dough into kind of a ball shape that just took a minute. We're going to do the part that is the key to this recipe. I need to get out just a little bit of flour. I'm gonna put some over here. You shouldn't need a lot. And we're gonna roll this out. You can see how it is sticking together but there's still nice and big chunks of butter in it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna laminate this dough. So we're gonna roll it in two thirds, like you're holding a letter, and then we're going to turn it 90 degrees and we're gonna roll it out again. And we're gonna do this three times. So this is the second time we're folding. So now we're gonna fold it the final time and roll it out again. Turn it 90 degrees. Now we're gonna roll it out until we have it to our final size we want for our biscuits. We roll this out to our final shape. So now we have this rolled out perfectly. We have our three folds in it. And all we have to do now is cut out our biscuits. You can cut them in whatever size you want. I like a little bit of a thicker biscuit, and I am gonna flash freeze these. Normally I would just throw these in a Ziploc bag, but because I'm making so many, I wanna be able to stack them in the Ziploc bag. So we'll just quickly freeze them on this cookie sheet, and then we will get them in freezer bags. And I wanna try to add as little flour back to this as possible. So I'm just going to kind of smoosh this together, I did roll out both of the biscuits and I just stuck this one in the refrigerator while I was cutting these ones out just so that the butter would stay nice and cold. Out of a double recipe, we got two, four, six, eight, 20. So for this size cutter and how thick I rolled them out, you get about 10 biscuits per recipe. So we are gonna get about 40 biscuits today, which for Josh and I, that will last us a really long time, which is awesome. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this. I'm gonna go ahead and get it rolled out, and then we'll cut them and get these biscuits in the freezer. I'm gonna stick these ones in the fridge while we roll these ones out. all of our biscuits rolled out and cut out so we can get these on our cookie sheet and into the freezer and we can move on to our next project. I'm so excited to have homemade biscuits ready for us whenever we want them. 
So into the freezer these go. I thought it would be fun before we move on to the next project to go ahead and give these pumpkin scraps to the chickens. Hey girls, come here. Here they come. Anytime they hear me. Come on girls. Come on girls. You gonna eat it? No? Trust me, they will eat it. It will be gone by the end of the day. There you go. So pumpkin seeds are natural dewormers for chickens. And they're eating it now. It just takes a second. Maybe we'll have some pumpkins growing in the yard next year. One of my favorite things about having chickens is you feel like you have no food waste. You could compost that, but I love turning my kitchen scraps into eggs. Girls, you need to stay over here. All right, back into the kitchen to move on to the next project. So one of the next projects I wanna get going on is starting to cook up this breakfast sausage. I'm gonna cook up two different batches of sausage, some breakfast sausage here, and then I'm gonna cook up some Italian sausage. I wanna keep those separate just so that I can decide what I wanna use them in later. And I'm gonna go ahead and cook up eight pounds of breakfast sausage because I love having it cooked in the freezer. It just makes my life so much easier in the future. And with some of the Italian sausage we're gonna cook up together today, we're actually gonna cook dinner tonight. We're gonna to make some pizzas for dinner tonight. I wanna get this sausage cooking on the stove so it can be cooking while we move on to make our pizza dough. No need to keep the stove idle while we're doing something else. We might as well have our stove, just like our oven, working for us while we're in the kitchen to maximize our time and efficiency in the kitchen. Right here is where I'm gonna get the Italian sausage cooking. I would cook more than just two pounds of Italian sausage but this is the only sausage I have left from the half, the whole cog we purchased. So I'm cooking up all that I have. And I can just use breakfast sausage in place of Italian sausage until it runs out. I can just add some fennel seed and some red pepper to this and get it more tasting like Italian sausage in recipes later on. So now that our sausage is cooking away, I want to go ahead and prep some cookie sheets for the bacon. And just for easier cleanup, I like to put a piece of foil on my cookie sheet. I want to cook this bacon in the oven and I want it cooking while we do some other projects. So let's get these two baking sheets filled up with bacon. So the easiest way to cook bacon is to put it on a cookie sheet and then we're going to put it in the oven and oh, I think our pumpkin's done. Oh yeah, so we can go ahead and get this pumpkin out of the oven, perfect timing. Then we can get another sheet of bacon on the top here. So you can see how much liquid there is in this pumpkin. So we need to strain all that off because we don't want that in our final pasta dish we're gonna make or curry or bread or pumpkin pie or whatever pumpkin recipes we might make up. All right, we have all of our bacon in the oven now. So let's go ahead and get our pumpkin straining. Our other pumpkin in the other oven is done. Yep, that's nice and done. So one thing I wanna show you when it comes to your pumpkin or your winter squash, the variety you choose can make a big difference. Can you see how dry this blue squash is and thick and rich this meat of this pumpkin is versus this one? There's so much liquid in this that we're gonna to have to strain off. The flesh is so much less dense. And that's why it's really kind of a cool thing there, this is very liquidy as well. When you grow your own, or even if you buy it from a local farmer, you can really pick specific varieties for what you want the final outcome to be. So now I know that I really like this blue, I can't remember, I will put it here. It's either Blue Hubbard or Sweet Meat, this variety, and it is one of my favorites. I said it last year that it was one of my favorites, and I'm saying it again this year. We're gonna do the same thing we did with our last pumpkin, even though I don't really think we need to with this variety, but I am, you know what I'm going to do? I'm gonna put this pumpkin on the bottom because this is the one that's going to release the most moisture. I'm just gonna take out the flesh of this pumpkin, put it in our colander with a bowl underneath, 
so the liquid can start to strain. We don't want all this extra moisture adding extra moisture to our recipes. We want a nice thick puree like you would get from a canned pumpkin. I can't <laughs> explain to you how much different the texture of this pumpkin is. It's so dry and thick and beautiful. I'm so happy with it. I'm definitely going to attempt to grow this variety again this coming year. You don't waste as much because a lot of what comes out of the other varieties is just water and this is all pure, beautiful pumpkin flesh. So now we have our pumpkin straining and cooling so we can package this up before putting it in the fridge. We've got our Italian sausage cooling. It is now done. And our breakfast sausage is still cooking away. I should probably, yep, it's getting nice and browned on the bottom. I think it's about done. I think we're gonna go ahead and turn that off and we're gonna let this breakfast sausage cool so we can package this up. We're gonna use some of this for our dinner tonight and then we should check on our bacon. Our bacon is almost done on the top here. I did rotate them. It looks like that needs a little bit longer. I do like crispy bacon. While we're waiting for our bacon, we're gonna get going on our pizza dough. I have six cups of pretty warm water here. To that, we are gonna add a quarter cup of sugar and I am quadrupling this pizza recipe again. You could use honey in this recipe if you wanted to. To this, we're gonna add three tablespoons of instant yeast and I'm gonna mix that together. Now we're gonna add a half a cup of olive oil and 12 cups of flour. So we are making eight pizza crusts because each one of these recipes makes two crusts. Six of them are going in the freezer and two of them are gonna be for dinner tonight. Did I say 12? We're doing 14. And I'm gonna start, this would be our 14th cup. I'm gonna start with just half of that. So we'll put 13 in there. We're gonna mix this up. This is why I like to buy my dry goods in bulk. I actually have an Azure order I'm going to pick up this afternoon. I'll probably have to take a break and go pick that up. It's a really small order this time. I almost didn't even put an order in, but I did go ahead and put one in. So we're gonna go pick that up together. But that's where I buy my flour because I go through a lot of it because I do like to do a lot of cooking from scratch. Do I cook everything from scratch? No, but as much as I can afford the time, I like to do it. And one way I can justify the time is by doing big batches so that I don't have to mess up the kitchen all the time. So like earlier, if you were making pizza on a Friday night and you were just making one batch, go ahead and double the recipe and freeze two of the pizza crust. So next time you wanna make pizza, you can just pull it out of the freezer. I'm gonna get in there with my hands. I need to check on that bacon. I really don't wanna burn the bacon. I can already tell this needs more flour. One way to get flour off your hands or to get sticky dough off your hands is to put some dry flour and use that to roll it around and it comes right off as opposed to trying to put your hands under water and then it just gets stickier. So we're gonna need this flour, but I really wanna check on our bacon before we get into really kneading this. Now I like to save my bacon grease. I think I have some in the fridge actually already, so I can't, oh yeah, that's done. All right, I'm glad I checked it. We're gonna let that go for a little bit longer. This looks perfect. So with this next sheet of bacon, I don't want it to cook quite as much. I just turned the oven off because that last sheet, I had that bacon get a little too dark. I tasted it, we didn't burn it, but we were sure close. So with this one, I don't want it to be so dark. So I'm just gonna make a little pour spout for the bacon grease. We're gonna try to get as much of this goodness in here as we can. Oop. All right. So now I just put another layer of paper towels on our plate and we're gonna get this bacon on here. Oh yeah, that looks perfect. My goodness. This is some of the best bacon I've ever had. I am more of a sausage lover than bacon. The way I like to eat bacon is, I really like it in things as like a flavor agent, not necessarily just to snack on bacon. I like it in pastas, on sandwiches, all sorts of yummy things. And having pre-cooked bacon that you know where that hog was raised is just an extra level of bonus 
for convenience. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss this foil. This is another convenience. This is just to make my life easier. I know that I could take the time to scrub this, but you know, we all have to give ourselves grace. And one of the things that I give myself grace is I allow myself to use a little bit of foil. So let's get back to our pizza dough. I think we're gonna call that good for the amount of flour. And I'm gonna turn this out here. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a good amount of time to knead this. I love working with dough. Oh my goodness. We almost just had a disaster on our hands. I just realized I did not add any salt to this. And if you've ever made any sort of bread dough and forgot to add salt, it tastes like nothing. So I'm just gonna splay my dough open a little bit and we need to add four teaspoons of salt. So that is a tablespoon plus a teaspoon. So I'm going to just go ahead and knead this salt right into this dough because you have to have salt in homemade bread products. So I'm going to knead this for probably a good four or five minutes to make sure that salt is nicely distributed. The one time I forgot to add salt, I had freshly ground a bunch of wheat berries and then I made biscuits to go on top of chicken pot pie. I'm just trying to like break this dough up a little bit just so that I can really mix it in really well. And I forgot to add salt to those biscuits and they had hardly any flavor. So ever since then, I've always been very cautious and trying to remember to add salt to my bread goods. And this is a, this is a lot, so it's important that we add it. I mean, it's a lot of dough, so it's important we add it because that would be pretty sad if we had eight pizzas, wait, two, four, yeah, eight pizzas that didn't have any salt in the crust. I hope this doesn't mess up the yeast. I don't think it will, but. I can feel the salt granules. So I'm gonna knead this until I feel like all that salt has dissolved. I think our dough is right where we want it. It's super soft and supple. So what we're gonna do is divide this into equal parts. So this is to make eight crusts and I like to make two pizzas per dinner. So I'm gonna cut this into quarters. And I'm gonna take just a little bit of oil, olive oil on my hands, woo, that's a lot. And I'm going to take each one of these dough balls and put it into a nice ball. So now we have our four dough balls and what we're gonna do is get these dough balls ready for the freezer and then one for dinner tonight. So I'm gonna take the one we're gonna have for dinner tonight Put a little bit of oil in our bowl. I'll cover this and when it's time to cook dinner, we will enjoy that for dinner. But the ones for the freezer, I'm gonna take some of these silicone reusable Ziploc bags. I love these things. The first time I got them was a gift in my PO box and I have invested in a bunch of these because they are fantastic. You can wash them in the dishwasher and I'm just loving them. So I can link these if you're interested. So for the dough for the freezer, all we do is put a little bit of oil in our reusable Ziploc bag, get the air out, and we're gonna pop this thing in the freezer as soon as we have all of these packaged up. We don't let them do any sort of rising before they go in the freezer. They're just gonna go directly into the freezer. We put the oil on there just so that they don't dry out. When you wanna use your pizza dough, you take it out of the freezer and you either pop it on the counter for a few hours let it thaw, let it rise, or let it thaw overnight in the refrigerator. So each one of these dough balls is gonna make two pizzas. So in the freezers, these go. We're gonna let our pizza dough just rise over here while we move on to making our pie crust. I wanna make, I think, at least six. I think we should make six at least. That way we have enough to make some into 
pies for the holidays and we have enough that we can make a couple quiches as well postpartum. So I'm just taking a second to kind of wipe my counter, regroup so that we can make some delicious pie crust. And pie crust sounds intimidating to a lot of people, but it's really not that hard, especially if you practice. And we are gonna use the food processor today to make our lives just a little bit easier. And in my food processor, I can only make a two crust recipe. So I can't put a bunch, I can't make six pie crusts in the food processor at one time, but that's no big deal. I'll show you how to do this super easy. I'm just looking at my recipe and I just had a panic moment. I thought that I just used my pie crust recipe on accident instead of my pizza dough recipe, but that doesn't make any sense. I used the correct recipe for the correct one because I put all the recipes on one sheet. In our food processor, we're gonna start by adding two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And then we're gonna dice up one cup of butter, which is one of these blocks. But before we add the butter, we have a couple more ingredients we need to add to our all-purpose flour. We're gonna add a teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of sugar. And we're gonna blend this together. Now that that's mixed all together, we're gonna add our butter. This is cold butter, I took it out of the refrigerator. And we're gonna pulse this together. So let's check and see, that looks about right. You want there to be some chunks of butter in there. So we're gonna add our double crust recipe into our bowl. I don't like to actually mix the pie crust in the food processor, I like to be able to feel and know how much water I'm adding because you never know exactly how much water you need in order to make your pie crust. So let's see if I can show you the butter pieces a little better here. So we have a bunch of different sizes. Some are a little bit bigger, more pea size. Some are a little bit smaller and that's perfect. So to this, we're gonna add anywhere from a half a cup to a little bit more of ice water. So I like to use a fork. And this, we're gonna mix it up just like we did with our biscuits where we're gonna mix it. And then we're gonna see if we need to add any more liquid. And sometimes the top part gets nice and moist. And then you need to add a little bit more liquid to the bottom where it's a little bit more dry. You can see that this has some moisture to it. It's starting to clump together. But over here, it's still super, super dry. So I tried to take the more moist dough and put it to the side. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of water on this area here, and we're gonna mix that up. And we're gonna try just to add a little bit of water to the area that's a little bit more dry. So once you think you're getting pretty close to your moisture level, I like to go in there with my hands and kind of do a test. And I can tell that's still a little bit on the dry side. So we're gonna add just a titch more water, and then we're gonna form this into our pastry. There, that's feeling good. You can kind of see how when I push this now into a ball, it's sticking together nicely. So now we're gonna prepare our crust to go in the freezer. I'm gonna take a piece of saran wrap here and I'm gonna pour our crust onto the saran wrap. You know what, this bottom part feels like it needs just a little bit more water and I mean just a little bit, like a couple drops. Mix that up. We're gonna add that onto our crust. And now we're going to work this into a ball. I like to use the saran wrap to help me because I don't wanna knead it. I just wanna push it into a ball. That's perfect. It's coming together really nicely. And now we're gonna cut this in half because this is supposed to make two crusts. Now we're gonna form this into a ball and wrap it up in our saran wrap. And I'm gonna push this down and I'm gonna form it into a disc. And here is one of our pie crusts. Now we have two pie crusts. These pie crusts are ready to go in the freezer. I'm just gonna pop them in the refrigerator for now so that I can repeat this process three more times. You know what, I said I was gonna make six, but maybe I will make eight. Because I'm going to my mom's house this next week to prep Thanksgiving for Thanksgiving on my side of the family. And it sure would be nice to not have to make pie crust then because I already have the kitchen kind of messy. I'm already at it. We'll see how much energy I have if we're gonna end up making six or eight pie crusts. Because I have 
about 20 minutes before I need to head to pick up my Azure order. And so I guess I'll just keep doing this until then. It only takes about six minutes to pull one of these together. If that, I don't know, not very long. The hardest thing is just getting everything out and then cleaning up after yourself. I do need to get out a few more ingredients for our pizza tonight. We have a favorite pizza around here, sausage, onion, and peppers. And we've got a bunch of peppers from the garden last year that we can top our pizza with tonight. All right, I'm gonna get going and just make a ton of these. So I got my eight pie crusts done just in the nick of time go run and pick up my Azure haul. This is a super small haul. I'll just show you what I got. If you're new, Azure is where I buy the majority of my bulk goods, like my flours and sugars and oats and all those things. But there are a few dairy products I really like to buy from them. I wasn't gonna put in an order this month, but then I ended up putting in an order because there was one thing I really wanted. So this is a new item for me. I've never purchased any of their cleaning supplies really before. This is just an all-purpose, fragrance-free cleaner. So we're going to try that. I'll probably use that to clean this kitchen when we're done because I need to clean the counters. They have flour all over them. This was the main reason why I ordered because this powdered sugar was on sale. It's organic powdered sugar that has tapioca starch in it as opposed to corn starch. And so it's a non-GMO and baking season is upon us. So I ordered, I got six bags that are one pound each. So I got six pounds of powdered sugar. I do know how to make my own powdered sugar, but I figured it was a good price. So I might as well go ahead and buy that as well. So Azure, the way that they do it is they reuse boxes. So sometimes it will say frozen potatoes, but that's not what's in the box. So I also ordered some whole medjool dates. Third trimester, or toward the end, you're supposed to, as a pregnant person, ideally eat three dates a day. So I ordered some more of those. I just made some date balls that are chocolate peanut butter. And so now I have enough to make some more. Some Epsom salt. You guys have seen that I'm starting to kind of decorate that bathroom, the guest bathroom that has a nice, huge soaking tub. And I wanted some Epsom salt my favorite Greek yogurt, and some sour cream. And then one more thing I got is six boxes of, wait, two, four, yeah, two, four, six. Six boxes of raspberry leaf tea. That's another thing that I am drinking a ton of right now. I can't get enough of it. It's so good and I really like it. So I'm gonna get all this stuff put away. If you are interested in Azure, I can link them down below. I have been ordering from them for years now and I absolutely love them. So I left in quite a hurry to get to my pickup on time. So we need to clean this up. But before I get to this, I want to go ahead and get some peppers out of the freezer. To thaw peppers from frozen for the freezer, all I do is I'm going to take them out of this silicone reusable bag and put them on a plate and we'll let them just defrost on this plate until we're ready to use them. And then our dough is about ready. It looks like it's doubled in size. I'm really happy with that. We already have our sausage pre-cooked. I do need to still shred some cheese for our pizza, but I'll do that in just a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and get our bacon that we pre-cooked. I'm gonna put this in another one of these silicone reusable bags and that way we can just pull out some bacon whenever we need. I believe these were one pound packages and I think I cooked up five or six packages, which is a great amount of bacon to have pre-cooked in my freezer. If I want this to put on a sandwich or something, all I have to do is pop it in the microwave for about 30 seconds or so wrapped in a paper towel and then it's ready to go or I can just chop it up and put it in a quick pasta dish. Having pre-cooked bacon is awesome and price per pound because you can buy pre-cooked bacon at, the, at Costco 
it's just a lot more expensive per pound if you look at it price per pound. That's how I got this idea. That's a great way to get ideas when it comes to convenience items you can make at home, is just look at the convenience items that the store has and see if there's a way you can do that for yourself. And by doing it this way, I am able to control the type of bacon. This is from a local pasture raised hog, and so it's the best quality bacon out there. So now we can put those in the freezer and I can get a clean up my mess. We were able to get so much done today. I'm super thrilled with the progress. I did unload my dishwasher before we started. You know that is my goal, so that we can load things into the dishwasher as we go. I normally would do a little bit better of a job, but I was kind of in a rush today. So for my bulk flowers, I typically keep one of these big buckets in my walk-in pantry up here, so I can use this to refill my bucket that's in my kitchen. I have completely emptied this, which is what I like to do, because then I'm gonna take my bucket that I have in my basement, I'm gonna bring that bucket upstairs, and this one I will refill downstairs, that way I can constantly have a rotation, and I'm making sure I'm using the oldest flower first, So we're gonna test this cleaner out for the first time. Oh. There we go. I like this cleaner. I like that it's unscented because sometimes you just don't want a scent when you're cleaning. So now I'm gonna go ahead and package up this breakfast sausage. I'm gonna use more of my new favorite silicone reusable Ziploc bags. And if I freeze this flat, I'll be able to easily crumble it apart. So I'm gonna fill this one gallon bag pretty full, but I can, when I go to use it, just use you know a quarter of the bag or whatever it might be. Now I have all the sausage packaged and the kitchen kind of tidied up a little bit. I wanna get going on dinner. So we have our dough we already made. Our peppers have thawed enough. I, you, I do like to squeeze any excess moisture out of them when they're frozen and then they cook up beautifully. These might be a little bit warm peppers because when I was squeezing the liquid out of them, I could kind of feel the heat on my hands. So now I hope they're not too spicy for Josh, but we're gonna put them on the pizza. I grabbed some pizza sauce from downstairs earlier today and what we need to do now is I'm actually going to first get this pumpkin in the fridge. Let me show you. You can see all the liquid that's coming out of that. So I'm gonna drain that and I'm gonna let this pumpkin sit in the fridge overnight. And we're gonna use this tomorrow or the next day to make our pumpkin ravioli with, but I want to allow this to continue to drain. And so what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna stick this in the fridge and let it hang out in its colander. And then I need to get a couple things out for the pizza. Normally I would cut up an onion, but I have these green onions that need to be used, so we're gonna use that and we need to shred some mozzarella cheese. We may need a little bit more cheese than that, so I have some pre-shredded cheddar cheese that I shredded the other day. So we can use that as well. I brought over a cheese grater. I do have a five pound block of mozzarella cheese in my refrigerator outside. And I do want to get that completely shredded before I go into postpartum just to have in the freezer, just as a convenience thing. I do prefer to shred my own cheese because I feel like the quality is better but I do kind of want some of the convenience of having it pre-shredded in the freezer. So I'm gonna use the greens and the whites of these onions just to make sure we use them up and they don't go to waste. Now we have all of our components for our pizza. I could cut up more onion, but I don't feel like it. We've got our peppers, onions, cheese, and our Italian sausage. So now what we're gonna do is I need to get my oven preheated to 400 degrees, not 450. The nice thing about making two pizzas tonight is I won't have to make dinner tomorrow because I am gonna be in the kitchen quite a bit tomorrow prepping for Friendsgiving. And so we can just enjoy the leftover pizza 
for dinner tomorrow. That's one thing about when I do big cooking days is I like to try to make my life as easy as possible by prepping, you know, like today we got everything ready so we can just make dinner with basically what we already prepped. Or I like to make sure I have leftovers in the refrigerator so that I don't have to worry about cooking. So I just put some olive oil on my parchment paper. Again, I'm using parchment paper as a convenience thing so that I do not have to wash these cookie sheets. These are the same cookie sheets I used to cook the bacon on, and now I'm gonna be able to use them again without having to wash them. I get questions actually about these parchment paper sheets. These were a gift in my P.O. box. I had never purchased these pre-cut parchment paper sheets before. Oh my goodness, look at our dough. It's beautiful. I had some reservations about my yeast if you were with me the other day in the kitchen, but I think the yeast is just fine. But I will always have pre-cut parchment paper in my kitchen because it's just so convenient and lovely to have. I love it. I'm gonna cut this dough in half. A lot of times I like to put some cornmeal down because we like the texture of it, but I don't feel like getting that out right now. So we're just gonna go with it just like this. I try to make them round as much as possible, but sometimes they're a little oblong and that's just fine. They taste just as good, regardless of the shape the dough ends up coming out. I probably put a little too much olive oil in the bottom of this one, but that's okay. We will just go with it. A really yummy thing to make your crust nice and crunchy, you can cook your pizza in cast iron, but I don't have the energy for that tonight either. So we're just gonna go with it like this. This is some homegrown, homemade pizza sauce from last year. I'm trying to go through this stuff before, actually this is from 20, 2021, okay. I do have a couple 2020s down there that I should probably go through first, but this apparently was the closest one that I grabbed. I didn't have to make pizza sauce this year because I made enough the year before that I didn't have to make any this year. It smells good. I put peppers in this pizza sauce. I probably didn't need to put this last bit of cheddar cheese on here, but I thought, you know what? A little extra cheese never hurt anyone. There's our pizzas. I just ran outside to grab our frozen biscuits and we're gonna get these put in our freezer bags. I have done this where I did not flash freeze them and I just put them in the freezer bag and that works just fine as long as you don't stack them. But because I wanted to stack them, I went ahead and I pre-froze them. So I am going to put our eight pie crusts in one extra layer of protection. So it looks like I'll be able to fit two in each bag, but because these are already wrapped in saran wrap, they, I won't really need to clean them between you, so that'll be really nice. If you're gonna use yours within a few weeks, your pie crust, you really don't need to put them in an extra layer of protection, but I might not use them right away a few of them we'll use for Thanksgiving, so I probably don't need to put them in here, but I'm gonna do it just, just because I have it out. I do wanna go ahead and get our pizzas in the oven. Talk about a productive day. We got enough here for six more pizzas. We have about five pounds of bacon cooked up eight pounds of breakfast sausage and two pounds of Italian sausage. We have eight pie crusts and 40 biscuits. Plus we got dinner in the oven and our pumpkin cooked and the kitchen is clean. So we are well on our way to stock our freezer with some amazing goodies. I'm gonna go run these out to the freezer. Our pizza is perfectly done. Got some nice color on the top and on the bottom. Perfect. Talk about a productive day. That was awesome. 
you not only got all of that cooking done, you got the kitchen clean, the counters clean, I got the stove clean, I got the refrigerator clean. The only thing I didn't clean is I did not sweep and mop. My dogs were in a room because I gave them baths this morning and I didn't feel like blow drying them. So they were in a room air drying all day. And right at the end of the cooking, I let them out and they cleaned up my mess on the floor. But I still probably should mop. But I think I'm going to wait because I'm going to be doing a lot of cooking either tomorrow or Saturday morning, I'm not sure. And I'll probably wait to do a big, nice clean on the floor once I'm done doing all that cooking. The only thing I did not do, because I have my dishwasher going, is I have some dishes, like big pots that don't fit in my dishwasher in my sink. I'm not going to get to those tonight. We will get to those tomorrow morning because I'm going to have a cup of tea. Josh is home so he can have his pizza whenever he would like and we can just enjoy the evening. <laughs> I've got my raspberry leaf tea here. Like I said, I can't get enough of it in my ember cup that keeps it hot. So I might go watch a little bit of TV. I love the fact that we were able to not only get so much prep done, but we were able to make sure the kitchen's clean so that I can go and relax in a clean kitchen. So I just wanna thank you all for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. Remember, I will link the recipes that I can down in the description box. Obviously, there's no recipes for cooking sausage. That's just a convenience thing of having pre-cooked sausage and bacon in my freezer. But the pizza dough and the biscuits and all of those types of things, I can link for you down in the description box. So I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I wanna say thank you for being here and I can't wait to see you next time. If you wanna watch some more of my other videos, I can put some other freezer cooking videos right here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.